think as a younger coach, I felt like I needed to know everything and needed to motivate them and hype them up. But I feel like most of the time that would just backfire, honestly. You have to read the athletes. Some athletes, there are going to be times where you need to bring them up and give them confidence. But a lot of times, especially in the beginning of competitions, I think you need to actually almost lower expectation or not put the focus on them trying to get a certain result and just kind of feel the competition out. It's like running a race. You're not going to sprint the first 200 meters of a mile. Right. You want to ease yourself in. I think because we know Bethany a little bit more intimately, we've trained with her a bunch, we've seen kind of like a little bit more of what she's capable of. We can watch and be like, for example, on event two, she did muscle ups unbroken, then she did her burpee box jump overs, and I could tell immediately from the first round that she was saving herself for the last round intentionally. It wasn't like she was going slow, because she wasn't, but we've seen her move very fast, you know? To watch that and be like, she knows exactly what she's doing on interval one, and she's in front. It was a foreshadowing for how the rest of the event went. By the time they got to the end, here they have to do another complex, and the only one doing it unbroken is Bethany, because she saved her triceps in the first two rounds. She knows her threshold that well, that's dangerous. obviously awesome and not necessarily expected but it's just it's on this girl is crazy <laughs> like so i did false grip right, grip the entire yeah, time ring muscle ups already by themselves like ex they're not the greatest exercise for me so i've had to like really work on them yeah. so when i initially tried to start doing these i was doing them regular grip and i couldn't even do it <laughs> and i was like oh no and so i like lost sleep over it because i was like dang like it's not going to be because of a heavy lift, I'm not going to go to the CrossFit Games. Right. It's going to be a stupid complex, you know? Yeah. I was thinking about it and I was like, I need to try a false grip. Yeah. It was way easier. I, I, I just like don't kip well. That's why I wanted to see strict ring muscle ups because that's yeah. actually a better exercise for me. Yeah. I think relative to how other girls do ring muscle ups. So Randy and I talked about it a little bit last night of like, yeah. okay, try to get like 20 on the first round and then like yeah. 10 to 15. And so we were shooting for like 40 to 50. And that's what I do best is like 80%. Like if I can just stay at 80% and just coast, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. I think I could have like maybe gone a little faster on all my burpee box jump overs, yeah. but I've done five. Yeah. <laughs> this is a PR workout. Like yeah. everything's a PR this weekend. She has only done maybe two pistols. So she PR her pistols today. I don't need to win any workouts this weekend. Yeah. I just need to like, go at a steady pace. Like, I don't have that fifth gear, yeah. so I need to be smart with how I'm doing all these workouts, and it's only day one, so. During the event, there's there's a bunch of thoughts going on in my head, but generally, like, you can probably tell I'm a pretty laid back dude, so I think I'm less anxious than maybe most people are, but there's definitely that feeling of worry of like, oh, I hope nothing goes wrong. I hope the sled slides easily. I hope there's no pain during it. And, those are the main things I'm thinking about. I'm not, my mindset isn't like, oh, she's gotta win, she's gotta, she's gotta get in front of this girl. It's like, you know, I hope you do well, but I'm more like focused on your well-being and being able to like get through the weekend and having some longevity in this sport because I know that's important to her to continue doing this after this year. So that's kind of where my mind is during 
during the events? Well, I think the best way to respect myself is to con continue to do the routines that I always do every single day, which is I'm about to go and lay on my back for like 30 minutes. My name's Loke, uh, Loke Rao. I'm a physical therapist. Um, and I've been working with uh, Bethany and Randy as a team for about five, six months now. They approached me out of the blue, not through any connection. Randy had found some stuff that I had done online and I guess had asked around and we started working. And what's been really cool is that, you know, I've worked with lots of CrossFitters before, but most of those people were nine to fivers, meaning that they had regular jobs and they would do it in their spare time. You know, with Bethany, she has completely approached her rehab uh, with me uh, very professionally. And one thing I've been working on this year is like, when I get high, I need to get low as far as like uh, energy levels. And I think that allows my back to recover. The gravity of her situation, even every single day is revealed to me. I didn't realize that she was out for that long and that what a big deal it was within the community for her, for her to be out that long. So far, I mean, we're two days in and I think she has exceeded all expectations, which has been awesome, but also just a credit to her and Randy for sticking with what we've been doing. Work out on the competition floor, you're in a sympathetic state, fight or flight, and I need to get myself into a parasympathetic state, restful state, as quickly as possible, and that seems to help ease with my back pain. Like most uh, CrossFit athletes, simply put, she was stuck in a ton of systematic extension. You know, everyone who CrossFits, they're gonna be stuck in extension to some degree, but in her case, she had already reached her threshold. When you're that extended, the analogy that I typically use is that, imagine if you couldn't bend your elbow, if your elbow was stuck straight. If your elbow was stuck straight, then you really couldn't train your biceps or your triceps because they can't move. Now we apply that to her whole body. We've given her more awareness and ability to use her adductors, her inner thighs, her glutes, her hamstrings, her obliques, which have been huge for her, getting her to actually move her ribs. And so that's what we've done. We've slowly built these things up. We did a ton of breathing stuff in the beginning. And one of the first things I actually did with her was I put her in a completely different pair of shoes. I put her in these old granny shoes, which she actually wore today. And the funny thing is, is that, talk about how small this world is. A few people saw her in the shoes and then they had messaged me. They're like, hey, do you know who Bethany's working with? Right, because she's in these Brooks and the only person that I know that puts everybody in Brooks is you. And I was like, well, Maybe do a little meditation and just calm my body down. Um, try to eat whatever food I can because I am not in the mood for food. And then hopefully sleep more than one hour. We're going for two hours tonight. Tomorrow is a bigger day for me than yeah. anything. It's going to really set the tone for the rest of the weekend. I need to see how, one, I feel in the morning after all of that. Because yep. like I said, we just PR'd a bunch yep. <laughs> on rep repetitions. Yep. Um, and I'm sure I'll be tight. So it's just like waking up, making sure that I'm getting my breathing protocols in. Yep see how Linda feels. Obviously I gotta do like a max snatch, yeah. whatever that is. Um, so tomorrow is like, it's not moving day tomorrow for me, yeah. but like everybody else, it's a do as best as I can day. Yeah, awesome. <laughs>
mean, I'm just sore. Like the normal like soreness that you would get from lifting heavy deadlifts. Yeah. And honestly, like there's no like nerve pain, which is, you know, that's the concern the entire weekend is like, sure. is it gonna go out on me? Am I gonna have nerve pain to the point where I'm like debilitated? Yeah. Um, and overall, like just soreness. And I was just like, holy, I was kind of worried last night. I didn't sleep that well. We got like two hours last night, okay? I was like really concerned about waking up with my back hurting, that I had like two pillows like slightly under my butt so my knees were bent the entire time. It was a whole thing. Cause the bed that we're sleeping on, it's, it's like from the 1960s. But location, location, location. Yeah. We're walking distance to the hotel room, so. As a coach for me, whether it's working with NBA guys or her, there's always been, and this is just how I am, there's more of like a protective mindset. A, a, I hope when this guy comes down trying to get a rebound, he doesn't roll up on somebody else and turn an ankle or blow something out. It's the same with her, you know, when she's doing deadlifts for time. Like, I hope her back is safe. I hope everything's feeling good. That first sled pull, I was like, okay, we're gonna see what this looks like. Cause I just, I have no idea. And that moment is I'm having that thought. There's a lot of things. I look at the workouts and I'm like, okay, I haven't done some of this stuff in like over a year and a half. And I'm just hoping that the repetitions that I have done in the past uh, will kind of just meet me at the right time on the floor. You know, lucky for me, it's like, okay, she's got this, right? But it's like a complete unknown and I've just learned to honestly trust her because this whole season's been about that. Yeah, with the max snatch, I think it's get to the barbell, see how you feel, like she has kind of a number in mind of what to start with and then if that feels good, let's build. I don't know how it's gonna go until the moment is there. But if I keep on getting ahead of myself and just continue to think about the fear of the pain that I could be in, I'm not gonna be able to fully express myself to the best of my ability on the floor. I think she knows and we know that she's not gonna, she's not gonna PR today. She's feeling like she's 80%, especially with those Olympic lifts and hinging type of movements. Small things to focus on in the time between her warming up and her executing, including our minors, just about visualization and, and the goal of really not really chasing certain results, just like almost a feel. Let's try to execute clean. Let's try to make sure we get no, no reps. I don't think there are a lot of people that are capable of what she's capable of. Even at her unhealthy, I still think she's incredible. It's just a matter of getting through it healthy and you know, if it's there, if it feels good, push it a little bit. Save a little bit of energy getting into that 800 meter run and the snatches for time because I think that's like an event she can really do well in even at her 80%. Bethany can do stuff I have not seen 
almost any other competitor do. She can do some of the most difficult workouts. She'll finish and just kind of be like, all right, that was great. You know, I'm like, are you, are you, you're, she's a mutant. Like, I don't understand how you're, how you're able to do something that hard and look like it barely phased you at all. She needs to thread the needle where she needs to thread it, manage the movements that she needs to manage in order to move on. At the end of the day, it's a points game, right? And she just needs to make sure she's getting between people. She doesn't want to see the leaderboard. She's not somebody that likes to look throughout the weekends. Even as the event's going on, she tries to block out the noise. Everyone keeps telling me there's no way around it. Seeing that and being able to just like see the person I know and love and that I think is so great, like being able to see that represented out here is just awesome. Like she deserves that, rec that recognition. She sure, yeah. deserves all of that and more. You know what, honestly, like I've never been the one to really look at the leaderboard, but um, this past year, I've actually forced myself to do uncomfortable things like listen to myself on podcasts, watch old uh, competitions, which I would never, ever do. It means a lot to me that like other people get to see the person I love so much do so well. We just also know that there's so much more for her, yeah. like so much more than anyone's even seen. Really hoping that this year or next year, whatever you get to really see, like what we know. She's running her own race, she's staying calm, cool, and collected, and that's kind of, that's been the case for all the events so far, and I think that's kind of her mindset throughout the weekend. I think it's just a comfortability thing. You have to be comfortable with yourself, and almost like you have to build your self-worth, your self-esteem, and self-confidence, because you know that like your value is not found in that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm able to kind of see that stuff and it not affect me as much. Sure. I don't think there's as much anxiety of like, oh, she's got to get first place or, you know, or, oh, we got to win this game. Of course I want to win. Uh, I think outwardly I keep this kind of even keel deal, but um, there is a little anxiety going on underneath. A lot of the gymnastic stuff we have hammered all year because that's the one thing that we could really double down on. So things like seated legless rope climbs, handstand pirouettes, toes to bar, some of those sprint style workouts should be really good for her. Nervous going into this workout because I don't need to win any workouts, right? But like, I don't need to bomb a workout. because I'm a Christian, that God has specifically given me gifts and abilities in this area. I feel like I can fully express myself as a person when I compete on the floor. I'm at the most peace when I'm on the floor or I'm even in the gym and I get to fully express myself as an athlete because of the gifts and abilities that he's given me. What's been really hard though, um, is these past three years. Text, call, Marco Polo all the time, whatever. And like, I can't tell you how many Marco Polos she sent me, like, my back went out on me today. My back went out on me today. I feel like the enemy has really tried to get me to quit. And I almost did. I, last year, I felt really burnt out, really burnt out. 
I wasn't having fun anymore. I remember even competing at Wadapalooza 2022 in January, and that was the first time where I was on the floor and I was like, I don't wanna be here. And that was like a very scary feeling for me. I remember crying before each day, just like, why, why do I feel like this? And like trying to like figure out why I was feeling like this. And yeah, I just wanted to quit. I, last year I was like, I think I'm done. Like, I think I'm done with my career athletically. Um, my back obviously isn't holding up, so what is this all for? She's been having this back issue since she was 12, particularly this last year, hardcore for like the longest amount of time straight. And I don't think most people would keep their head on straight as much as she has. We both said like we full heartedly believe that like God's gonna make a way in this competition for it to work out for her in some way, shape, or form. It's really inspiring for me to watch that and see how she incorporates that into her marriage and into her friendships and into her job and into her, uh, into the gym, into everything. And I'm like, yeah, like, that's an example that I think that like, a lot of people want to follow. And like, I would say that I'm pretty firm and strong in my faith, but like, it's just extra inspiring to see how God will do things through people when they allow it, you know? I thought after two months, um, after quarterfinals last year that my back would be in a really good place. I'd feel back to my normal self because that's usually how the cycle rolls with me. It's like six weeks or eight weeks of my back feeling a certain way and then I'm fine. And uh, since quarterfinals, it's been an up and down roller coaster. I actually wrote down like a whole template and, and tried to kind of organize things in a way that were more black and white than I think what it ended up being because I was trying to get a, an idea of what, what we could actually do. Um, and as the coaching process started, it was very evident that that plan was going to have to change pretty quickly. Of still having good days in there, I'm not going to be super pessimistic about it because that's just not true. But I would say overall the last 365 days has been the toughest 365 days of my back. Um, been in a lot of pain with it. It was clear that she had some injuries she was dealing with and a lot of those timelines for trying to get back to doing certain movements or moving certain loans, loads were just going to be unknown. Bethany was hard, one of the hardest athletes for me to place in the entire world. I mean, I, you know, I know how good she can be, but I was getting mixed reports about her health and I, I was really tempted to pick her inside the cut line. And then I just started hearing that her back wasn't feeling great. And it, you know, it was sad for me to hear that. And it was hard for me to pick her. After the first day, I was like, there she is. And like, it was so nice to see her after, you know, it's been basically two years since we've seen that version of her. And when you know, I was there in Vegas, in the West Coast Classic, she was phenomenal. And the, the sky seemed like the limit. I think a lot of people thought she had a chance to fight for a podium that year. And obviously it was just heartbreaking. Sometimes, a person's faith needs to be rewarded. And not just because that person deserves it, but to show others that faith is something worth having. The prayers do get answered. Miracles can happen. And that dreams can become reality.